Hey guys, this is Susan with Pack Leader Dog Training, and I'm here with Rachel with Rachel Kohler Dog Training for another weekly Q and A. Hey. <laughs> All right, let's dive right in with question one. All right, so I got a new puppy for Christmas. She's 13 weeks old and is very bitey. How do I know if this is normal puppy biting or if this is true aggression? So to answer your question, normal puppy mouthing is just kind of like, they'll just put their mouth on you, you know, just for like, there it is because they put their mouths on everything. Um, aggression usually looks like there's intent to it. So they just look like you'll see their state of mind change. It's not just like, a, oh, there's something to put my mouth on. Um, there actually is some intent there. But honestly, it doesn't matter which one it is. I'm just going to correct it. So mm -hmm. we can sit here and argue day after day of whether or not it's aggression. But it doesn't matter. Just, a, just uh, correct it. Address it. So I would either bonk, uh, so say no, and bonk the puppy. Or like stick my hand down their throat like Rachel does. Um, but something to let the puppy know that this is not acceptable and it actually is uncomfortable if you do this. Yeah, so I love that you added that in right at the end, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, because I guess it can be hard to tell with the puppy. Um, but you're right, you got to know the intent and you got to think about their body language. Um, but at the same time, they're puppies, so they're learning how to play and they're learning their body language. So I've seen a puppy just playing, be like very stiff and just kind of like go for the hand. Cause if you get to the point where they've had enough successful reps of biting your hand, they're going to think it's play. So it's going to be less of just them putting their mouth on you. And it is going to start to be bites, mm -hmm. but like play bites, but they're still going to hurt. Right. So to the average owner that might come off as aggression, but exactly like you said, I don't care what it is. <laughs> I don't want you to do it anymore. It hurts. Right. Um, so correct it. And honestly, like, if it is true aggression, I'd rather correct a 13-week-old puppy for biting me and then start the training process now and start setting them up for success now rather than waiting for it to be, like, a bigger dog trying to bite me, you know? Right. Um, but, yeah, I agree with what you said and just cut it out now. Yeah. Yeah. Just address it. It's a bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Make it stop. Question two, I want to train my dog here the way you do, but I want to call it come. Will it work the same way? Yeah, so the cool thing about our commands is they're just words. So I could literally name them anything I want. Um, if you're training them the same way or if you're training it anyway, like it doesn't matter, right? Um, so with recall, this one's a little bit different, but like even when I do recall, we use leash pressure, right? So I will start with not even naming the command. Um, now I know it's a little different because a lot of people will name recall immediately, but sometimes just to test it out, I'll do like leash pressure on the dog and when they start coming to me, good job, good job, good job. So like there I've already started recall, but it's got no name. So if then the next time I want recall to be like um, catch up, then I could say catch up and then apply leash pressure and the dog is gonna come to me and then they get a treat. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do that over and over and over, at the end of the day, catch up can be, you know, be your recall command, right? Um, so yes, you can train it the same way that we do and use a different word. Um, now, I do want to make a comment about why I personally really like to say here rather than come. I've got two reasons. Not that anyone asked, but I'm just sharing them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like here travels farther. You can say it louder. And I feel like it travels, where it's come, just like, I feel like the word ends. I don't know, like, the proper terminology for any of that. But here, I feel like it's louder, and the word travels. And then the second reason is, um, telling your dog to come is probably already super watered down. Now, that's not to say that you can't retrain your dog and make come have meaning and make them listen to that. Um, but you are more likely, as the owner, to struggle holding yourself accountable. Because if you've been, now been in the habit of saying, Fido, come, and then ignoring you, it's going to like, you're going to say it more often rather than when you're like, Fido, here. Like, you know you mean business, right? This sounds very proper. When I say this, I know I have to follow through. If that makes yeah, sense. Exactly. I, like that. I, I even do that. Like, I'll say, come on, let's go, or come on. And right. then, like, if my dog doesn't do it, I'm like, okay, now I have to recall you. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's more like a lackadaisical term for mm-hmm. me. Yeah, I'm like, I've completely, I've completely watered down Gaia's let's go. So let's go means come with me. Well, I've just started like saying let's go too much when she's outside. And then she knows we're about to go inside. So she gets the zoomies first. And now she, then she comes in. So because it's such like a loosey-goosey thing to say, let's go has no meaning. So that very easily happens with come. And then your recall has no meaning, which is dangerous and sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, if you like that and that works for you, then yes, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I went way deep for no reason. No, that's good. Did you have any other comments? No, that was great. Okay. What was that thing that we were saying? Which um, one? Scooch, scooch on over to the next one? No. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. It was something stupid. So, question three. If a trainer trains my dog, will they only bond with the trainer and not me? And won't that cause them to only listen to the trainer? That's a good question. A uh, question for your trainer. Um, because I don't know how they train the dog or you, but for us, we are a one woman team right now. So I'm doing my business. Rachel's doing hers. So we don't have multiple people handling the dogs really. It's just us, but we train the dog to respond to our words and the e-collar. So our words tell the dog what to do. The e-collar follows through if the dog doesn't listen. And then we train the people. So the owner has to learn what commands to say, and if the dog blows the owner off, how to follow through. So it's going to translate to this owner now. And then the owner can educate whoever she would want, like the pet sitter or you know what have you. But like you, you have to know how to communicate with the dog on how it was trained to then be able to be of value to the dog, if that makes sense. So if they train the way we do, then yes, or no, it wouldn't just listen to the person. It would listen to you as well. Right. So it really depends on the training style that they use. I like that you mentioned that it depends on the trainer because I had completely forgotten that not everyone <laughs> trains like we do. No, um, no, I remember there was a story somewhere, someone trained a dog and then gave it to the owner, but then didn't give the owner any training, whatever, whole thing. Um, but yes, exactly what Susan said. And then I won't dive into this analogy, but I really love analogies, but it's just like training is a language. Cause as I said before, words mean nothing to a dog, right? So we, as trainers, I think like we teach the dog this language and then we teach the owners this language and then owner and dog are speaking the same language and everything is happy. Um, but yeah. And as far as bonding, like your dog, of course, is going to form a relationship with the trainer. Um, well, depending on the trainer. Um, but they're not like limited to one bond. Like they're going to have their relationship that they have with their trainer. Like me, I have a relationship with all my dogs that I train because that's just how I am. They're still going to have a relationship with you too. They're still going to, still going to love you, whatever. Like you're still their owner. You're still relevant to them. And if you follow through with the training, you could have an awesome bond with them. That's healthy too. Through training, right. Right? Your relationship will hopefully just change you and your dogs because now you're going to be able to hold them accountable for all their commands so your relationship will change but strengthen right Which is- yeah i like how you said that change but strengthen yeah. I like it all right number four i've heard you say most people shouldn't own a malinois is there any other breed most people shouldn't own <laughs> um so just to touch on that for anyone who doesn't know why we say most people shouldn't own a mal Mouths are extremely high drive. And then for anyone who doesn't know what high drive means, all I can explain is tick, 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 tick. that's how I explain them out. Like they're just going constantly, right? Their brain's constantly, they need a lot of mental exercise and a lot of physical exercise. And then they need some more mental exercise and some more physical exercise, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, uh, as far as other breeds that I think most people shouldn't own, you know, it's really funny that you ask me this. I was thinking about that this morning. I literally really? promised you, I swear I was, because I'm like, why do we always say just mouths? Um, so let's be real. I'm going to answer this question by not answering it, because that's what I like to do when I don't have an answer. Okay. <laughs> Depending on you and your lifestyle, I'm sure there are quite a few breeds that probably wouldn't be the best fit for you. Right. Um, but that being said, through proper training, 
the breed doesn't super matter, but you gotta be fair for that breed and what their needs are. So mouths are usually the big one that comes to mind. Um, this isn't like training behavior wise, but like another one that I think of is like doodles, long fur dogs. You shouldn't own one of those if you're not gonna brush them and groom them, right? So I don't, I don't know how to answer this. I know mouths are super easy because they're like crazy and like I want a mouth, but it's gonna be a while before I get a mouth because I know I need to be in the position where I can work them and train them a lot, you know? So to answer your question, I don't know. And it depends on, it depends on your lifestyle and what you are willing to do with the dog and what you want to do with your dog. Right. I so think it'd be easiest if you had a trainer that you followed or respected. And if you're thinking about getting a dog, talk to them. Yeah. Because it does depend on your lifestyle. And so I'm not going to, I generally don't like lump breeds of dogs together besides the Malinois. Um, Which is so weird. <laughs> because it's just a good rule of thumb. Because yes, you could get a laid back Malinois because my one dog is pretty laid back. Like she's a good girl. Um, despite what I say about her after the Q&A. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's a good girl. But it, as a whole, Malinois are just notoriously nutty and a lot. And so it's easier to just say don't get one. But if you were considering getting an adult dog, then breed doesn't, I could say it matters less because you'll know the temperament of the dog. Right. What is the dog's needs? Because you can have a husky that just likes to lay around. So you're like, okay, well, that'd be easy to own that husky. But some huskies are like high drive and want to be and do. So it depends on your lifestyle. But if you're going to go get a puppy, that's when I'm going to like standardize the breed. Right. Because I that's all we can do. Yes, I can't tell you the temperament of that puppy. So if you're a laid back family that just wants to have a family pet and not go out with it, I would advise you not to get a Husky or an Australian Shepherd or a German Shepherd, any of the high drivey dogs as a puppy. Because as a rule of thumb, they're gonna to be too much for you and they're not gonna be happy. But probably easier yeah. just to find a trainer that you really respect. And then if you're considering a breed or a specific dog, just talk to them and see if they can advise you on if it's a good fit or not. That's a great idea, Susan. I don't, like didn't even think about that. But yeah, so if you're watching this and you want to get a puppy, hit one of us up and talk to us about what your lifestyle looks like and what you like want to do with this puppy. That's cool. I didn't think about like talking to a trainer about breed ideas. Yeah. Um, because yeah, like it really depends on you, right? And like what you want to do with them. Right. So that's cool. I really like that question, Susan. And it is really funny because I was thinking about that yesterday. It was when I tagged you in that video of the Mal, I think it was. It was a couple days ago. Okay. Well. Scooch. All right. So, Susan, what are release words and why do you use them? Release words are marker words that let the dog know that the command is over. So, I only have one release word. I think Rachel only does one release word. You can have multiples, but why? I would just do one. So my release word is break. And I use them for commands that have duration. So all of my commands except down have duration. So if I ask a dog to place, that means they're going to be laying on this bed till I tell them their release word, which is break. Mm -hmm. So when I say break, that means you can do whatever you want within reason. So there are still rules to break. If you're on a leash, it means you can't pull on the leash. So have to be like, civilized i guess um no pulling on the leash and like i tell owners so if my dog's in a break in the house or if my board and train is in a break in the house you still can't be a jerk no barking no getting to the trash no chasing the cat like those kind of things so you still have manners but you can play with a toy go get a drink or just lay there do whatever you want but yeah, yeah how would you like describe those words um exactly how you just said no um so yes that is what the release word is and then I just really like this question because I feel like um that's not I feel like release words aren't talked about a lot um and you might think well like why would they be they're not like super important uh but they are because that's how you get duration so from being uh, I used to work at like a daycare um right when I started becoming a trainer and before that I would like train the neighborhood dogs. Um, when I would train the neighborhood dogs, they never really had a release word. 
I could like get them to do stays and stuff and then it would just kind of end when they saw me reach to giving them a treat or yeah when they got up um which is funny to look back and think how did I get any duration at all with that but that's one other story um but it's cool because like in the kennel I'd see a lot of owners like giving their dogs commands like their dog would sit and their dog would do great and then the dog would just like get up so that like waters down your sit so having that release word is what allows you to have duration because it means no sit until I release you um, and that's really cool because so if you have release words you're teaching your dog to pay attention to you mm-hmm. versus paying attention to their wants and needs so if you have right. no release word and you tell your dog to sit their mind is still going crazy and they're like well I can just get up whenever I want so I'm pretty adrenalized so I'm gonna get up no or impulse it, control yes Ooh. So if I make them do a release where it means that they have to compose themselves in a sit despite their excitement with whatever is going on and they have to wait on me. So they're more in tune with me and you get more structure that way. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, release words are super important. And you know what, if you've already started training your dog um, and they don't have a release word, it's okay. Like you can still add one in. All you'll do is lay your dog in a sit and they break, you can make like an ah uh-uh sound or whatever sound you want, um, like like a like warning marker kind of, like I'm not going to correct you for this right now, um, but you make a little sound to mark the dog breaking the command, and then you'll guide them back into it, and then you will, you will want to like go back and like do slower, and like you're not going to just suddenly have an hour-long sit, which wouldn't be fair to any dog, don't make your dog sit for an hour, um, but yeah, so you would want to build off of that slowly. And then you would say the release word and you would move and the dog would move with you and then you can give them like a treat or something. Um, but just know if you haven't been using one, it's not too late to add one. Nice. Okay, six. My dog barks at everything. I got a mini educator, but sometimes he barks despite me correcting him. I dial up each time I say no. What can I do? So. No. Let's think. Um, first off, awesome that you got a mini educator. Because, I mean, that's just the right brand. Um, <laughs> okay, so I want to think about, I like to go to like the root of problems a lot, which makes everything I say 10 times more complicated than it should be. And Susan's probably going to hit me with like a better answer. Um, but I'll think about his mindset, first of all. So if all you're doing is correcting the barking, and it's, he's still barking let's take a step back and think about his why are you looking at me like that okay um (laughs) let's take a step back and think about his mindset so go-to's would be place and crate um so you're gonna want to train in place and you want to crate train him so when you're not supervising him he's in the crate and he's calm and then when you are with him he can be in a place so when he barks it's gonna be that much easier to correct him and then he'll settle back down into his place quicker And then my one other comment I had, and then I'm just got to hear what Susan's going to say, is maybe that correction's not valuable to him. So if he's not e-collar trained on other stuff, this e-collar pressure probably doesn't really mean anything to him. Um, Also, you might not be like marking it appropriately. So to him, this e-collar pressure could just be something that randomly happens. He also could just not care about it. And uh, you would need to find a punisher that works for him. So as long as you're marking the barking um you could then bonk or spray bottle or penny can or compressed air or find a correction that is valuable to the dog what do you think susan (laughs) so short answer was implement more structure right because if like rachel said if all you're doing is correcting the barking something's going wrong so what where is his state of mind Mm -hmm. so he's constant like just where is the state of mind? I would implement more structure. Now the long answer, this is the dog I have for the board and train right now. So I do know a little bit of that story. And that is exactly what is going on. Because at first, when the owner told me this, usually if you correct a behavior, it'll go away. That being said, this is a state of mind. This is a state of mind issue. So he gets so anxious that sometimes it explodes in a bark. So, yes, you're correcting that bark, but his state of mind is always like, just like anxiety all the time. So you're just correcting 
that explosion sometimes. That's not enough for him. He needs some structure. So if you ever are correcting a behavior and it's not working, take a step back and just look at the rest of the day. So just correcting the behavior is kind of a, I want to say easy way out. It's mm -hmm. the easiest thing you can do to try to solve the problem is just correct that behavior. Sometimes you can't get away with that. You have to do more. The dog actually needs training besides just a punishment. It needs to be told what to do as well as what not to do. Right. So. I like that. But that was cool because you said exactly. That's why I was staring at you. Sorry. I'm like, Susan's going to be like, Susan's going to pop in and have a really just simple answer because I always over explain and over complicate everything. <laughs> that was great because I could tell from what you were saying that you know when I smile, it's because you're going to say exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah, probably. But that was funny. Right, okay, so. so next question. Where are we at? Seven. Seven. Okay, I'm excited about this one. Okay, I'm excited about all of them because I love these cuties. Okay, question seven. Susan, what are the pros and cons of training an auto down on place? Okay. Let me do pros first because I can't think of any cons yet. <laughs> um, pros, state of mind. So I train place to be like a meditation spot for dogs. It literally means lay there, nothing will hurt you, and I'll let you know when you're done. How cool would that be for us? Like we can switch our brain off and just relax, so like meditate, and then randomly a person will come and be like, okay, you're done now, and be like, oh, okay. Oh, I would I love, love that. I like that so much. Okay, I wish that existed. It probably does. Can you anyway. join me, please? So that's why the auto down is awesome because it really changes their state of mind. If you don't do the auto down and let them have just all four paws on the place bed, nothing changed except they can't move. It's like they're in quicksand or whatever, right? Or cement. So they have to stand there, but they're still thinking about that cat over there they want to attack or mm -hmm. the person that came in they want to jump on. And so now they might bark or whatever. So it's really a state of mind changer. Right. A con of doing the auto down would be it depends on your <laughs> definition of con because I can't think of any. Um, I'm a, I guess now your dog is like going to fall asleep. So if you want your dog to be awake on place, that's not going to work. If you want to use place as like a home base for your protective watchdog that's not going to work because your dog's going to fall asleep and they ain't going to care who comes in um <laughs> that's your con <laughs> i like it um so sorry i gave you crap the last question for like looking at me weird and i just can't like not laugh on this one because it's like i couldn't come up with a con either right <laughs> so you got creative you came up with some good ones um but i couldn't come up with a con um <laughs> So yeah, exactly what you said, like the pros, like, dude, like place is an off switch. Like your dog oh, gets to just okay. I have a con. Okay. It just takes a little longer to train. Just a little. So That's like fair. It, there, it, there's it, an extra half a step in there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, that's it. That's Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, no, you thought of one. You win. Good job. Because I couldn't think of any. <laughs> um so I have trained place both ways. So up until probably like a year ago, I don't know, um, is when I just started training place to be an auto down. I've like experimented with it in the past. Like I, um, place for me when I first became a trainer uh, at the place I was training at, meant you just had to have two paws on the place bed. That's terrible. I never, even when I first started training did that, I always, I just said, you know what, you gotta keep all four on there. But I would literally tell owners, I don't care if your dog's doing jumping jacks, as long as they're on the place bed. That how, was how I used to train. Now, I did start to experiment encouraging the dog to lie down when they go on there, but I didn't make that a part of the command. So the dog, like, their mindset was still like, doo -doo -doo, and they would do whatever, right? But gosh, when I started training the auto down on place, like, it was game changing because it really is. I always, like, ask owners, like, has your dog ever just been, like, absolutely crazy one day and you're like dang I wish they had an off switch that's what place is and I'm mm -hmm. pointing over here because guy is in her place right now sleeping 
um it is it's just game changing like why would you not and again if you don't for whatever reasons and like you do you boo but it's so great it's like instant meditation like you said right so i love it so that was kind of funny because you answered my question but i was going to ask you if you noticed a change from when you didn't teach when you did drastic drastic yeah. change so i would have a lot more whining dogs on place because it's like what the heck am i supposed to do can i get off of here i would have a lot more dogs who knew place and who hadn't struggled with it before um like attempt to break because it's like i'm standing here and i actually really just want to walk over there so like can i step my paw off of it or can i like stretch my head as far as i can but like when they're on place they just settle down and they're like go to sleep i think i maybe I, I don't think I ever had a dog fall asleep on place before. I trained the auto down. Um, and then now they all just go in there and go to sleep. And I love it. It's so great. And then you can use it for so much more because not only is it just like putting your baby in a playpen so they can't get into anything, but it's, like you said, just meditation. So now, rather than just using place to be so my dog doesn't dig in the trash, it's like maybe your dog is digging in the trash because they have anxiety or... You can use it for a dog who's like scared of things and in a bad mindset because you can just put them on place and then their mindset changes just like that. It's magic. And I love it. And place is my favorite command ever. Out is second favorite, but place is like where it's at. I know. Super great. I know. All right. Eight. My two-year-old Frenchie doesn't like men. She barks and growls. How do I fix this? Um. Uh-huh. So, trying to think if I could just give, like, a normal answer and not dive all the way into everything. Um, but I can't. Yeah, just no. <laughs> um, no, I can't. So, basically, what I would do, aside from doing a full training course, which is, like, what I always do, obviously, um, you can do the synthetization with, guess what, place. I use place a lot for desensitization because like Susan mentioned earlier, it's meditation and no one's going to hurt you. So just exist on place. I'm going to advocate for you. I'm going to tell whatever this, whoever this man is, like, don't look at my dog. Don't touch my dog. Don't talk to my dog. Ignore her. And I would just start with that for a while. I want to be in a situation where you're not going to like fully train the dog or whatever, like keep it simple. To be fair for this dog, she doesn't like men. Let's plop her on a place. Tell the men to ignore her. She's going to learn there. Don't bother me. And then you can just teach her to exist around them. Cause she doesn't just like, if your dog doesn't like people, your dog doesn't have to like people. She doesn't have to like men, but you don't get to growl and snap and bite at them. Right. Now you can, you can correct that, but let's set her up for success. Let's have a place. Let's have her exist around them and then go from there. Then there's lots of other stuff you can do, but that would be like my go-to train a place or create training and just teach her that she can exist in a room with men and they're not going to hurt her. Mm-hmm. And then there's a thousand other steps I would do in addition to that, but I'm trying to like work on <laughs> keeping my answers simple. <laughs> yeah. The same thing. Recipe for success for me is teach the dog what you don't want and then what you do want. Mm-hmm. So I would train your dog at the very least heal in place, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah. Heal in place. And then do as she said with place, existence, right? So once your dog understands place, they know to stay on there. Now you're going to have men around her and start further away. And then if she doesn't react, doesn't get off place, you'd say, good, give her a reward, and then have the guys move closer. Now I don't mean like staring at her and like slowly moving closer. I mean just like sitting on the counter and going over. And then like, yeah, they'll walk closer to her and then they walk by and next time they're a little closer. Next time they walk by, they're a little closer. Each time the dog doesn't react and stays on place, you can say good and reward. If your dog reacts or breaks place, correct. So you have to stay in your command because that's what I told you to do and you know, and you're not allowed to be a jerk, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to advocate for you and that's how the dog learns that you advocate for them because they're not allowed to react that way but the men never get up close to her. So I would never have men come over and just start petting her because that's not fair. Um, and then the heel would be nice because you can take them out in public. Cause I don't know if you're like me, but I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of guys who are going to be able to come over to my house. Um, so I would go out into public, but your dog knows heel. 
Nice. So you hold her accountable for a heel. Every command, the dog also has to be well behaved, right? So my dog can't be in a heel barking at someone. Right. Right? So if I'm walking past a guy, then she barks. No, correct. If you break your heel, no, correct. And just have her exist. So guys don't approach her, but she's just learning to exist around guys and nothing will happen. But same thing, I would start further away from these guys. And then each time I pass and do a successful rep, if the dog doesn't react, I'll just move slightly closer next time I pass the guy. But that's the simple that's answer for me. Right. But like Rachel said, we would just train up the dog because it's hard to just give these answers. So this is whatever. Um, disclaimer. It's hard mm -hmm. to just give answers and say, correct the bad behavior or correct the bad behavior and do this. Because what I tell owners is, I don't know how much freedom your dog can be allowed and have your dog be the dog you want him to be. By that, I mean the board and train that I have right now, he barks at everything. So much so that the owner's got a mini educator and they correct him for his barking, but he still barks. So they say that they'll, he'll bark, they say no and punish, he'll bark again, no and punish, and he'll even like twitch and he'll still bark despite dialing up each time. Um, so I know that with my program, by providing all of the structure that I do, I can get you the dog that you want. And then if you ask me, well, is he still able to like cuddle me in bed? I don't know. All I know is that if I do everything that I do here at my house, all of the structure, he will be the dog you want him to be. And then once you get the dog you want him to be, you can slowly start to give more freedom. And if he stays the dog you want him to be with good behavior, he can have that freedom and get more. If he backslides, you need to do more structure. So it's really hard for us to get these answers. Like we really try, mm -hmm. but we don't know if all, of, if these specific answers will truly give you 100% what you want because we would do more structure. Right. And we know that works. Right. But like, this I is think the best answer we can give you. Right. I'm so glad you said that because I don't know if I've said it before on a Q&A or just with me and you talking. It's like my answer for everything is train your dog. Just all of the commands because I know if the dog is trained all of the commands. It's just a, such a mindset change. And then on top of now you have all of these tools and all of these other things you can do. So mm -hmm. I, know. I like that you said that. But yeah. So we will try our best to give simpler answers for owners. But do what you can, and the more work you do with your dog, the more you put in, the more training you try to do with them, the better you're going to be. Right. right. Okay. Want to scooch one over to the next question? Scooch, scooch. Is it number nine? <laughs> yes. So, my dog used to go into the kennel on command. Recently, it's become a chore to get her in. She'll go to a bed instead when I say kennel. Should I just stop crating her? Okay, so you said the dog used to go in, ke in kennel on command, but just started not really wanting to and now goes to the bed instead. Yeah. Okay. So if I was you, I would go back to leash. Have the dog on a leash, and we're going to make this word mean something. So set us up for success. And I say put the leash on because now you have a way to follow through. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to go balls to the walls, um, I might rename it just for fun because it's going to have a new name now. And this is like this word. The reason I changed the word is because I'm going to be a hundred percent on top of it because mm -hmm. right now, much like when Rachel said earlier with the come command kind of watered it down, same thing with kennel. Now, when you say kennel, she goes to her bed, whatever. So if you want them to go crazy and be like hundred percent successful, I'm going to rename it cage or whatever. I don't freaking care. Cucumber. I'm going to rename it. <laughs> Cucumber. Uh, and then put her back on the leash because there's no confusion and I'm going to retrain the kennel command. So I do have a video on doing kennel drills and like when you would name it, but you would just walk up to the kennel, dog on leash, have them sit without saying sit. It's an auto. And then leash pressure into the kennel. And if after like several reps, your dog's probably going to be a pro because she already knew kennel at some point, one point in time. So now I'm going to introduce the new word. We walk up to the kennel, you auto sit. Now I'm going to say cage, 
whatever you want to say. And then same thing. So now we have the word, have your dog go in there. And then much like every other command, you'd slowly work in the e-collar and then be able to transfer to off leash. But like it's all those steps. So just like every other command, but you start on leash, rename the command, and then transfer it to the e-collar. And then once your dog's on correctional, you'll be able to say cage, your dog doesn't listen, no, and then cage. So follow through like every other command. But that's what I would probably do. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, I like it. So uh, Miss Gaia over here uh, was very similar. So she knows kennel command and then suddenly she's like, mm, do I want to? So she would kind of like mope one over to me and go in her kennel. Uh, but if anybody else told her kennel, she decided that she didn't have to go in the kennel. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not the game we're playing. Um, so with her, what I did was pretty similar to what you said. Um, I just didn't rename it. Um, just knowing me, I'm not going to remember the name. I'm just going to, I'm calling it kennel again. Um, cause I say kennel to like a thousand other dogs. So anyways, um, just kennel drills, right? So I made it a habit to do kennel drills. So Gaia works for her meals. Um, she works for most of them and then I like give her some in her bowl, but whatever. Um, so that became a part of our routine. So we're doing kennel drills, kennel drills, kennel drills. And she loves clicker. So I'm like, brought the clicker into it to make it fun, right? So kennel, click, treat, whatever, blah. So just work on it, right? So take a step back. Don't just stop creating because your dog's like, no, nah, I don't want to. Because then you, literally you're just giving your dog what they want. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to go. Like, okay, so you've got a kid and they don't want to go to school. And then you're like, well, my kid doesn't want to go to school anymore. And they're in like 10th grade, so they just don't have to go anymore, right? It's like, no, you got to go to school. No, you got to go in your kennel, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, just work them through it. And it's okay to take a step back. Take some steps back and put the leash back on or put the e-collar back on if they're already e-collar trained for the kennel. Um, or completely just redo it so it's nice and fresh and clean and there's no gray area there. But I wouldn't stop cleaning your dog because they're being a brat. Because <laughs> right. then they'll do that for something else too. I don't want a place anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Dogs are something. They're smart though. I always say, uh, or I found myself saying this a lot recently, uh, you know the book like if you give a mouse a cookie? Yeah. Dogs are like that. Dogs are so like that, right? So I'm gonna, huh? If you give your dog an inch, yeah, yeah, okay, more, more and more and more, because they're greedy. Just kidding. Anyways, so that's that. Um, start over with the command, work it through, but don't don't quit. Everything's okay. Okay, last one. Is there a way to get my German Shepherd to not chase my cat, or is that just her prey drive? I've been told by the rescue I got her from. There's nothing I can do. Yes, there is a way to get your German Shepherd to stop chasing your cat. Full disclosure though, without having seen your dog and without knowing your training skills, be careful and have your dog back tied when it's around your cat just because I'm not trying to be responsible for someone's cat being killed. Um, but anyways, yes, you can train your dog to not chase your cat. What that's going to look like is there's lots of different things to do, right? So I'm just going to throw out some ideas um, because again, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this. First off, you can correct the dog for chasing the cat. What's that correction? Whatever's valuable for the dog. But again, we gotta be fair. So the dog's just gonna be like, well, I'm just doing what feels natural to me. What the heck am I supposed to do, right? So place, shocker. I think place has been my answer for every question tonight. Have your dog on place, teach him to exist around the cat, right? Have him back tied so he doesn't accidentally eat the cat. Um, so have him on place, teach him to exist around the cat. Now be fair, the cat doesn't get to walk up and hang out with your dog on place. I don't think that's fair. Um, so place, correcting him for chasing the cat. Um, you can even out him off of the cat. So you can train him out. Sorry, um, I got distracted. Um, you can train him out and out him away from the cat and place and correcting it. And there's something else I was gonna say that was really important. Oh yeah, low level dial up might also be super beneficial because if your dog's on place, right, their head's up, so unless you play, train place to mean your head has to be down too, which I don't, you can also low level dog down, right, just to help him exist so he's in a place, but he's laying down, but he's still staring at the cat. You still don't get to do that, so now you got to low level down and like not look at the cat, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
but yes, so your rescue probably, I'm not going to say anything actually about that. Um, but yes, you can. Um, but just remember, if your dog's not a cat type of dog, advocate for them both and don't put either one of them in a dangerous situation. But yes, you can train your dog and with proper structure and boundaries, they can coexist. Miss Susan, what do you think? So Rachel's answer was pretty, pretty well-rounded. Um, you can just correct for the bad behavior, right? Some dogs that I work for, some dogs like my board and train, when they corrected for the bad behavior, it didn't work because they need a whole like reboot. So I don't know what your lifestyle is like otherwise, but if your German Shepherd is just allowed to kind of do whatever they want whenever they want, it might not work, depending on the dog. But right. you could give a high level correction. I would have the dog on a leash, um, but you could give a high level correction with the e-collar for chasing the cat. And if the dog is, deems the e-collar valuable, they might say, that really sucked. I'm never going to do that again. Or because their state of mind is always so crazy, they might still try. Mm -hmm. So doing place and obedience commands makes it more fair because when you first train place, it's going to be in low level distractions. The cat won't be there. And then you teach the dog like, well, you can't get off place because you want to. You can't get off place because my your dad walked in the room. You can't get off place because the doorbell rings, right? So like you teach them all this stuff, which is more fair because they're never allowed to get off place. Now you introduce the cat. The cat walks into the room. You can't get off place when the cat's in the room either. And so it's more fair because the dog already knew, well, I can't get off for everything else, but like, can I get off for the cat? And you're like, no. Okay. Right. So it, it is more fair, but you could just correct. Um, but like I said, it may or may not work because you may need the other training. So why don't you just do the other training? Yeah, why not? Do it doesn't hurt to have a trained dog. But teach existence, like with everything else. If your dog doesn't like something, and by doesn't like, I mean runs away from or tries to attack, fill in the blank. Teach it place, and then teach it existence. Like just teach, so place means you can't get off. And now introduce that item that they don't like slowly and advocate for your dog, and that's it. That's the answer to everything. So great. It really is. <laughs> just make, make one audio, like just one clip of us saying that. And just and post it. that every week. Here's a Q&A, guys. It's <laughs> the, the only thing you need. But, like, it is. Like, training is so magical, you guys. Like, I'm serious. Um, side note, one more thing about that. If you were done, were you done? I'm dying to talk to you. Okay. It also made me think, okay, you got cats chasing the dog. Rescue says you can't do anything about it. Is this, not that it really matters, like, still train your dog and all. But is this a new dog? Like, is this a newly adopted dog and he's chasing your cat? Because that would make me want to lean even heavier towards just train him, right? So it's like, anyway, like no matter what, like this is what I would recommend. But even more so, you just bring this dog in your house and now you've got a cat and he wants to choose your cat. They don't get to be near each other, right? So either dogs in a special room, cats in a special room, don't know, don't care. Train your dog. And then like you said, then introduce them together. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think it would be like even more unfair if this dog just came into your house and now he chases the cat because he doesn't know any better and then he gets like a big correction for it. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. I think just train him because like you said, like, what's it going to hurt? All training is going to do is like make things better. So you can never <laughs> go wrong training your dog. Right. That was a good question to end on. Yeah. Because no. the answer is train your dog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do that just every week post train your dog. There's, there's your Q&A Tuesday, you guys. Unlimited questions. Here's the answer. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was fun. Enjoy these Q&As. It's, uh, it's been forever, but it hasn't. Right, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, as always, if anyone has any questions or want any clarifications about the questions we answered today, uh, let us know. If you've got more questions you would like answered next week, let us know. Um, be sure to like and follow us at Pack Leader Dog Training and Rachel Colder. No, Pack Leader Dog, yeah, and Rachel Colder Dog yep. Training. I'm pretty sure I say it wrong every time, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, is that all? Yeah, that's it. Oh, well, okay. it was good. It was good uh, answering you guys' questions. And like Rachel said, if you have any, please let us know because we love doing these. Yeah. All right. See ya. See ya. Okay.